Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and how are you? Jamaica, UK. I actually found out that Philip Powell, who is a um, member of parliament in Jamaica and also the leader of business, isn't it? Opposition business. Oppos opposition business is here in the UK. As you know, we just had the election recently. Sir Powell, tell us, what was it? What was it? What, what, what was it like? Well, I was here as part of a larger group of mm. Commonwealth parliamentarians who were invited to participate in an observer mission to yeah. do an assessment mm -hmm. of the UK elections. And in fact, I was honored to lead a team mm -hmm. that went into New uh, East Devon yes. as part of a grouping of eight constituencies that we looked at, East Devon being one. Normally when I, I, I said to someone that I was coming to see you and the question that we ask is, isn't normally when you have volatile areas, areas of corruption, credibility issues in election that you have observers? <laughs> but, but that's not the case. No, the, the association tries to be involved in all Commonwealth countries yeah. when we have elections and the UK um, is one such, but they go all across the, the Commonwealth. Now tell me now, I mean, we've got Jamaican elections and Jamaican elections is very exciting, very passionate. What comparison would you say between what happened a couple of days ago yes. and Jamaica? Well, as part of the mission, we have done an assessment yeah. and uh, I have been able to identify clear comparisons. Mm -hmm. the, the truth is that we are all parliamentary democracies in the Commonwealth. Yeah. Uh, what what distinguish, I think, um, us from the UK is that we tend to put in a lot of belt and braces Mm -hmm. We do have uh, uh, the use of technology yes. um, to safeguard against any um, corrupt practices. The UK system relies a lot on trust. Yeah. And it has worked well. Um, there are some issues that we have detected that we have put in our assessment. Um, for example, the calling of a snap election really works against minority parties, really? especially mm -hmm. the independents. Um, because, as you know, the U.S. now, the U.K. now has a fixed election date, and so parties are planning yeah. um, around a certain time frame. So when it, it happens out of time, mm -hmm. then it, it does put them at a disadvantage. So, so do you think then, like like the SNP, uh, UKIP, UKIP was completely obliterated? Yeah. Do you believe that, in light of the fact that the snap election was called, it worked against them? Yes, it would. And in, in the case of East Devon, yeah. where we had an independent, um, non-party affiliate, affiliate uh, candidate, I think, yes, she would have been at a disadvantage. But that notwithstanding, mm. uh, I, I do believe that the parties do have sufficient access to the process to ensure fairness. Amazingly, unlike Jamaica, they really don't take advantage of that opportunity. So yeah. the, uh, the absence of the candidates, representatives, they, their agents, that was palpable. Mm. Uh, as you know, in our case in Jamaica, from registration onwards, they, both political parties do put forward their agents to supervise and to ensure that there is fairness throughout. In the UK case, yeah. they do rely a lot on the infrastructure of the returning officer and his or her staff to ensure that that is done. One notable exception mm -hmm. and um, distinction with our system is the use of postal votes, votes mm -hmm. here and also the use of proxy Do we use votes. postal votes in Jamaica? Not at all, not right. at all. Um, I, I think if, if that were to be done in Jamaica, and it's something I think we need to look at, yes. including the use of proxy votes, we will have to put in more systems than you have here, again, to safeguard against them. Um, you know, regarding the diaspora conference and for years we keep talking about overseas voting, I know British people overseas were able to vote in the election. Do you think Jamaica will ever reach that point? I think eventually, again, it is going to require far many more safeguards yes. than what I see here. I, I do believe that the system as now obtained can um, be, be negatively impacted yes, yes. Uh, by unscrupulous persons. Uh, in the case of Jamaica, I think it is an opportunity for us to look at what obtains there and to see what we can put in place to ensure that mm -hmm. if, if Jamaicans from the diaspora wish to vote, they, they, they should be able to do so. So finally, um, what were your thoughts about the election? I mean, so much things happened. It was a 
yeah. roller coaster. Well, you know, <laughs> a, a, a part of the mission was for us to interface with various groupings. Yes. Uh, we met with um, the elderly, we met with kids, those below the voting age, those um, just reaching the voting age. Mm -hmm. We met with the returning officer and so on. And I found that the level of interest on the part of young people, young people yes. was very high. Uh, it was amazingly high, mm -hmm. uh, especially because we are in this deep rural constituency. We didn't expect that to be so. So that was one thing. The, the so level, in the rural, it was high as well? It was high as well. well it was wow. high as well. Mm -hmm. in, in the constituency that I participated in East Devon, there was a 73% turnout. Turnout, wow. So the level of interest was, was high. We met with farmers. We met with a wide cross-section of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, in that era, the conservative um, dominates. Yeah. But again, we were able to detect significant support for an independent candidate. Wonderful. So finally, <clears throat> you, 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 you want to get now to watch Usain Bolt. <laughs> yes, yes. He is performing for the his final time on Jamaican yeah. soil tonight. So, so listen, um, just a, I just want to get this one now. One of the things which I'm hearing about in Jamaica now quickly is about the crime issue. Yes. Um, and we recently in the UK, we have had a few spate of knife crimes. In comparison to Jamaica, it is dwarfed. Would you want to comment on anything like that? Well, you, you know, the, the truth has been that we have been afflicted by this problem of crime and violence. Mm. It has perceptibly been increased in the last year or so. I, I, I believe that the government has to refocus on it to develop a real crime plan. Yes. Um, because it is affecting the prospect for growth and yes. increased investment in the economy. Mm. Uh, I think there will have to be some new measures yes. to um, get to the perpetrators. The, a lot of it stems from criminal activities, yes. criminal gangs, and so on. So visitors really ought not to fear it, yes. but it is bad for our country. It is yeah. bad for our um, business sector. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay, finally, um, the. I, I reach out to a lot of Jamaicans in the diaspora and all over. Is there any last word you'd like to share? Tell, tell us about your background in, in, in the government, previous government in Jamaica. Well, I was a former minister of technology, energy and mining. During mm. our time, we were able to open up telecommunications. We were able to do a lot with energy, yes. the use of renewable That's energy in Jamaica. Right. Did you sell in energy? relation to energy, yeah. we were able to bring in um, great capacities in uh, wind, solar and hydropower. Yeah. Um, I think there are opportunities for Jamaicans who live over here. Mm -hmm. um, I, even though I'm part of the opposition, I really want to encourage yes. all Jamaicans to see uh, investment opportunities in Jamaica now, uh, especially as we try to grow our way out of our difficulties. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for joining and thank Philip Paul for all of his busy schedule. We're going to try to find somewhere we can watch Usain Bolt. <laughs> right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. Thanks.